Hey, what's up guys, welcome to Trending Reviews. So if you're watching this video, then you're probably aware of the Feel World F5. So you might be watching this because you're thinking about buying one, or maybe you've already bought one and you wanna know how to set this up and get it working with your SLR cameras. Now I won't go into too much detail about what this is, you probably have done your research, but just to give you a quick overview, it's a five inch HD monitor for your DSLR cameras. So if you're planning to go outdoors for your shooting, for your photography, for your videos, then uh, you might have a camera that doesn't have a flip out screen for you to actually see yourself. Or if you wanna get a larger viewport of all your videos and all your photos that you're taking outdoors, then this might be the best option for you. Now this comes in at about just under 140 pounds on Amazon. I'll have a link in the description below on where you can buy one of these. Now I'm gonna show you everything that comes in the box and then show you how to set it up and then give you an overall review of uh, how my experience has been in using this. So let's just get straight into it. Now in the box you have the F5 monitor, you've got a cold shoe mount, it's actually 360 degree spin on it so you can actually change this to any angle that you like. You also get a mini HDMI cable to connect this to the monitor and then you also get a um, sunscreen shade that you can mount onto this via the velcros that's there just along the edges of the actual screen and this whole thing is made of velcro as well. That's the only thing that comes in it. You also have a user guide to give you some tips on how to set this up. Now there's a few ports that come on this. So you have obviously the uh, mount connecting port there, which is connected to the monitor. At the bottom you have the uh, DC out cable so you can get some power going out of this into any other device or if you wanted to just connect this via a outlet plug, you'll also have to purchase that separately. You also on the sides here, you have the DC in, you also have the HDMI in and the HDMI out as well. So depending on where you want to display the screen, you can actually put the HDMI cable into the relevant ports here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be giving you the HDMI in because I'm going to be displaying my camera onto the screen here and showcasing this in terms of what most of you would be buying this for is actually using this as a secondary screen to your DSLR screen. Now finally, just before I go into how to set this up, I'm gonna tell you a few things that you need to actually buy for your camera to actually make this work. So obviously this doesn't come with any power. The first thing is you need to get some power for it. So what you need to do, there's a port at the back here where you can slip some batteries. I have these ones here. This is the RAV Power Savia F550 battery pack. It's compatible with a lot of the Sony cameras. So there's a multiple option of cameras that this will work with. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can buy this and have a look at the complete list of compatible cameras. So my Sony a7 III has the FZ100 battery in there. Now the port behind the uh, F5 screen here is compatible with multiple battery packs for both Sony, Canon, Panasonic, and Nikon cameras. So you can actually um, find the link of all of those where you can purchase these below as well. But I've uh, specifically am gonna be using the Sony ones. So the uh, F970 battery port here is compatible with the F550 pack that I've purchased from RAV Power. These are both 2,900 milliamp hours of battery power each. So that will give me about three to four hours, depending on usage of continuous battery life to power the monitor. Now, the last thing I want to do is obviously, I want this monitor to be powering my camera as well. So what I'm gonna do is buy a dummy power, which is this one here. So this is basically a dummy battery. It's plastic, there's uh, actually no power in it. But this is where you connect the DC input um, onto the monitor there. So this will be there just on the outside onto the DC in section there. Now I'll have that connected and this will go into my camera so that everything that I'm seeing from the camera can be displayed directly onto the screen. So this is where it will be connecting and powering both devices at the same time. So let me connect all of the pieces and show you guys how to do that. Okay guys, so now I have the uh, dummy battery right in there. So this dummy battery actually comes at just under 28 pounds on Amazon. Again, I'll have the link in the description below, but it is compatible with the Sony FZ100 battery packs. So what I need to do now is connect this to the DC in port. So just on the uh, left of the monitor, I'm gonna connect that in there. Now, like I mentioned, this can rotate. What this doesn't do is if you rotate it, the screen itself that's being displayed on there will not automatically adjust as well. So you have to manually change that in the settings. Or what I prefer is if you just wanna change this around, so 
This is if you're filming yourself and you want to see it on a large screen, but if you're filming yourself and you want to see it like a selfie mode, I would suggest just turning it around and just putting that in place. It'll be so much easier. Now, let me just quickly show you about this battery pack here. I'm gonna take one of these RAV power batteries and I'm gonna slot that in there. And you just hold down the button, push that in and it's in. So for your reference, I'm gonna turn this back around. You can see that the screen is now turned on. So that battery pack is powering the monitor that I've got behind this. Now what I want to do is display my Sony A7 III screen right onto the monitor there. So I need to get the uh, mini HDMI cable. What I'm going to do is put it into the HDMI in port there. And the other end into my camera's mini HDMI port. So now everything is all connected. I'm ready to shoot videos and see it onto the F5 screen. So let me go ahead and turn my camera on. As you can see, it's now switched over and it's being displayed on there. Now I'm going to move this around. There's no lag. It's pretty clear. It's just a larger version of this, but the primary reason I would use this is if I wanted to turn it around and actually see myself when I'm recording videos or shooting some pictures as well to see how they come up. You have an option here that comes up saying the operation and safety of this battery is not guaranteed. It's just a bit of a security measure because this camera is not really made for dummy batteries because the power is coming from elsewhere. But if you just select OK, you can continue using it. And then this sunshade, you can basically just click that on using the Velcro. And it's very easy. So if it's very bright and sunny outside, it will give you a clearer view of looking at all of your pictures through this viewport. So I'll take that off for now. I'm going to take a quick picture as well, show you how quickly the shadow speed is with this monitor. It's instant, it's in real time. If I go back to play, now you can see there's a slight lag between playing the uh, pictures that I've taken. It's taking a few seconds, which obviously isn't great, but it took a while, it finally got there, then you can see it. So I'm hoping uh, the speed on this can be improved in uh, future models, perhaps in the other fieldwood monitors that this may be fixed. Uh, but as you can see, here's some samples I've just taken. And if I just go back, going back to the camera view, Again, it just took a few seconds there, but finally got there in the end. So it's uh, very crisp, it's very clear. It does shoot in 4K, but only up to 30 frames per second. If you wanted to get the updated version of this, I would recommend you going for the MA5 or the Master 5 model. Now what that does is that comes with an additional micro HDMI cable as well, as well as a carry case, but the screen is 30% brighter and the refresh rate and the difference between the camera and the monitor is 10 milliseconds quicker. So those are the only difference with the Master 5 and the uh, F5 models. I've seen people asking these questions online, so that is the primary difference. But nonetheless, this is how it works. And overall, I would say the whole package, it comes up just under 200 pounds. So that includes the Fieldworld F5, the uh, dual battery pack for the actual monitor, and the dummy battery for Sony cameras. So all of the links in the description below for all of the purchases that you can make to make this work. Now a quick run through of the menu. Okay, and finally guys, I'm just gonna give you a quick run through of what the menu looks like and the options that come in here. So along the top, you have some buttons. So what I'm gonna do is quickly just show you what those buttons are. So you have the function one, function two, left and right, menu button, down and up, and the power button as well. So let me quickly show you what comes in the menu options. So if I press menu, now there's a few settings there along the top. So the first one is picture settings. You can see that you can adjust the brightness, the picture mode, contrast, saturation, color temperatures, and so on. So let me show you an example. If I go down, picture mode is on standard by default. I can change that to mild, user, or dynamic. So you can change how the screen looks in terms of displaying those pictures. Now, if I do change it to user, that means I can adjust this manually. So if I go down, I can change the brightness, the contrast, saturation, all myself. By default, they're all set to 50, the sharpness is 15, and then the color temperature, you can also adjust that as well. If I hit menu, it goes back to the top one. Next, it's the uh, main settings, so you can change here the language, the aspect ratio of the uh, screen, the uh, signal that this can come with, the backlight refresh rate. You can also reset the screen from here as well, just to see what the latest uh, version uh, firmware is on there. This is basically the zoom options, so you can go down 
see what types of different zoom modes there are and the scan modes and obviously if you turn zoom on then uh, you can adjust all of the other settings in there now these are the advanced settings so you can change here the markers the frames the grids and this is where you can also change the image flip so you can turn the screen uh, a certain way if you wanted to flip the screen from there it will keep it at the same visibility viewport right now but if i turn it like this way so it faces the selfie way then um, the screen would not flip, so I'd have to manually flip it through the settings at this stage. The last one is where you can adjust what the function buttons do. So function one shows you the histogram. I can change that for it to actually do different things. So I can select that manually. There's uh, plenty of options in there. I would maybe set function one to image flip, so that would make it easier. There we go. And then function two. I will maybe change that to maybe change that to zoom. There we go. And now if I come out of the menu, if I press function one, you can see the image is flipped the other way. Press it again, it's flipped the other way again, upside down, and then flipped horizontally, and then back to normal. So there's two levels of flip, is both vertical and horizontal as well. But that pretty much covers everything on the F5 screen. You can also see the battery percentage there on the top right hand side, just to keep an eye of how much battery life is left on the monitor, not the camera. So that's everything I wanted to show. Hopefully that was uh, very useful for you guys. If there's any other questions you have on using this or how to set it up, or if there's anything you want me to specifically test on uh, this F5 monitor, then do drop a comment below. Otherwise, I hope that was useful. I hope you guys subscribe and I will catch you guys at the next one. Take care.